Hello, welcome to another video by Moxa Marine. In this video, I am rebuilding a Bravo 3 um, upper end gear housing, not the whole thing, but just replacing the uh, upper seal because it was leaking fluid out of it. Um, and in the process, uh, I had to dis disassemble the input drive shaft. And the bearings that came out were these two, this, this uh, bearing and race, and this bearing and race here. And uh, the wider one, this is wider. You see how the, that race is a little bit narrow. The wider one is the inboard side. It's the one that's next to the gear. All right, and the part number on that one is 28621. 28621 on the race and on the gear it is, let's see if I can find it. There it is right there. 286682. So that's those parts. On the, on the outermost gear, the race part number is uh, 383A, 383A. And the gear itself is 387. So I think the set of gear, both these gears combined for Merc Cruiser is about $300, maybe $305, I can't remember exactly. Um, I'll put that in the, in the uh, description. But you don't have to buy the, the bearings from Merc Cruiser. You can buy the bearings these were bought off of Amazon. So I had trouble getting them out of the box. But so anyway, um, you can buy these bearings brand new off Amazon and I will put a, uh, the part numbers in the description uh, so that you can find the, find the source for the bearings. But uh, they're the exact same part. They have the same part number as the, the bearings that came out of this Merc Cruiser. Probably save about $100 buying them uh, independently off Amazon or something. But anyway, so I'm about to assemble this. Um, to, to uh, assemble this system, you have to have a, 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 a press. I have a hydraulic press. I have a 20 ton hydraulic press. I've had it for years. And uh, you have to press the gears together and I'll show you the order that you do it. But uh, I'm gonna press these gears together and uh, you don't press them all the way. You have to leave a little bit of space in there uh, to set your preload. Okay, it took a bit, little bit of work, but I finally got the uh, innermost bearing pressed onto the uh, input shaft gear and um, the, the uh, bearing is now com fully compressed on there. I had to use a sort of spacers and uh, sort of rings that I just keep in my shop. I know it's hard to explain in a video, but uh, if you work a long time, you collect old bearings, old races, and so forth. Like this is an old wheel bearing race from something. I don't remember where it came from. But I just save those kind of things to make spacers to uh, press things on with. Uh, it's just an assortment of things I have in my shop. So um, that bearing is now placed on. The next thing that goes on here is the race. That's the bearing. This is the brand new race. And it goes on, it goes on next. It goes on like so. Once that, then there's a spacer. And this spacer right here, it's got a little bit of bevel to it, but the uh, teeth marks go outward. I took that picture of that before I took it apart. So that's where that goes. Now, the next thing goes is the other bearing. Um, the other bearing uh, race and then the other bearing. So I'm gonna put the race on and then the bearing and we'll, and I'll try to press it on. The key to that is you don't press it on, you press it on where this, this ring here stays loose. You don't wanna compress the two bearings together to where this gets tight. You get it to where they just do touch and this can still slide around because the, you tighten it up when you're doing the preload and that's what squeezes these two bearings together to get your preload. So I'm gonna put the other bearing and race on now and uh, press them on. All right, the outer gear is now pressed on, and to do that, I use the old, uh, the back side of the old gear, I mean the old bearing, and set it on the, the face right here, and set it right there, and then I use the, uh, um, that's what I use. Oh, then I put the old race on, which doesn't matter anymore, I put it up here like this, like so, and then I just put something flat across there, um, I don't know what I use, um, I think I use this, use this old, this six inch hole saw. And then uh, once I had that, I used this this uh, socket as a spacer. So um, anyway, so those are now pressed in. And uh, like I say, you can't press it all the way. You have to make sure you leave move, leave it loose enough to where this this piece here slides around. And then you tighten everything up to set preload, and that locks in on this gear. So all right, continuing with this Bravo 3 rebuild to uh, get the old seal or the uh, old seal out, I just used an old. This is an old cam bearing from a Toyota Land Cruiser. And uh, it fit just about perfect inside that seal, so I just put it in there and pressed it out of the seal carrier. The uh, seal carrier is right here. 
And uh, so carry, it doesn't have a lip on the inside, so you've got to press it in there just the right depth and stop. Um, you want the, I guess the seal to be flush with the surface right here. Like I said, there's no stop on the back to stop it from going through. So about to press the new seal in, in this carrier. All right, about ready to assemble the bearing pack back on the drive shaft. So this is the bearing pack and uh, this is a brand new rubber seal. And there's this uh, beveled uh, bevel spacer here. It goes on top of your gears like that with the beveled facing uh, away from the main gear. Then your O-ring goes there. Then this is the, uh, this piece here goes in here like so. I don't know what this part is called, but uh, you look it up on marine.com. Then uh, this piece here goes here, and this is your main seal. I don't know why, cameras always seem to show dirt or show grit or something. There's something right there. Right there. Oh, I had to clean. Anyway, and then this goes here. So that's how it gets assembled in, on the uh, drive shaft. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, Flip this upside down. So I've got a, a tool. This is your tool to remove it. So you, you, what you do is you put this in here like so. And then you put, I guess you put this on here. And then this one here goes here. And then I'm gonna insert the uh, drive shaft up through there and put the bearing pack on it. Um, I can't hold a camera to do that too. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll uh, show what the results are. Okay, I'm in the middle of trying to get this preload set on this uh, Bravo 3 bearing and the method they tell you to do is not working. So I have these two bearings pressed together on the uh, main gear. This is the main gear here. And there's a spacer in between and so forth and all that's fine and dandy. Spacer's still moving around. Um, so when I assembled it and tried to use the nut and twist the nut and hold, hold the U-joint uh, the uh, U-joint steady and then twist the uh, the nut on the gear to basically what you're doing you're twisting the nut to set preload but what you're trying to do is squeeze these two bearings closer together that's not happening it's uh i've tightened that nut probably 100 foot pounds and it didn't budge these two gears matter of fact i can still move that spacer in there so it hasn't moved from when i first pressed it together so i'm gonna have to complete the pressing right here and try to get the preload right if i don't succeed it's gonna be a problem because then i'll have to separate the bearings again they make what's called a bearing separator which you can rent from O'Reilly's, which I'll probably have to run do if, if I screw this up. So this is a very, uh, I guess, a delicate operation to get these two bearings squeezed together. And what I'm gonna do is squeeze it a little bit, take it out apart, feel the preload myself. I can hold the gear steady. I can hold these uh, races and then twist the gear and see what the preload feels like and uh, do, use my feel the best I can. So that's what I'm about to do and try to get the preload set with this press because uh, squeezing, pull these two together with that nut just is not gonna do it. So let me try that. All right, um, trying to set this preload on this uh, bearing assembly has uh, been a bear, and uh, let me explain why. Um, I, I've, I make mistakes myself, and uh, so this is one of the mistakes I've made. Um, so as I was turning the bearing, I was using this little, uh, this is a beam type, uh, it's a beam type port wrench, allows you to get, this is an inch pounds. And you spin it around, you read the, read the bar, and it's supposed to be between, be between 6 and 10 inch pounds. And so at some point it was, it was too loose. It was about 2, maybe 3 tops, and it was spinning real good, no problem. And I kept tightening the nut, and at some point it, got, it jumped from about 2 to 3 up to about 11. And uh, I didn't understand why, how did it jump that high, because I didn't tighten it that much further, I didn't think. But anyway, so it jumped to 11, and... Um, I couldn't figure out why at first, but then all of a sudden it realized. So if you notice, as I turn this thing around, watch what happens. The entire assembly is rotating on top of this. So this is a castellated nut, and this, this junction right here, this spacer, that's actually your bearing retainer, is resting on that, that nut right there. And as I turn this thing around, you can see the entire assembly is, is turning on that, and it's taking about, let's see what's... It's taking, uh, it's hard to read here. Let me see, you want to come on around here? Okay, right now it's reading eight inch pounds, but that would be normally okay, but I noticed as I was doing it that it wasn't 
turning the it wasn't turning inside the races. So when I grabbed the, and that's when I realized I'd made a mistake. That I was reading the torque is taking turn the entire assembly on this nut instead of on the bearings. So if I I don't have but one uh, two hands, so I can't show you, but. If I grab these two uh, braces and hold them tight and turn it, then it's up around 13 or 14 inch pounds. So that's too tight. So uh, it's, can't, it's not supposed to be any higher than 10. So what I've got to do is um, I've got to take it all back apart and get it back to where you just have the gear and the two braces and then press them off a little bit. There's something called a bearing separator that slides right in here between the gear and the bearing. And then it's, it allows you to push down on the bearing to take the pressure off the, uh, uh, push down on the, excuse me, the gear so that you lose the tension on the bearings and then reset the, uh, do the preload again. So I don't have a bearing separator. It's a tool I have to rent from O'Reilly's. Um, I'm probably going to buy it this time. It's $25. I'm just going to go ahead and buy one and uh, keep it handy. Um, so anyway, that's uh, a mistake I made and I'm uh, going to try to do it again tomorrow and uh, Hopefully I won't make the same mistake twice. I'm gonna put a link to a video. It's by, uh, I think a guy named Chris A or something. He's got a link, uh, he's got a video on YouTube where he discusses this and I kind of watched his video to see what he was doing. But he did the same thing. He made, I'm gonna say he made the same mistake, but he did not grab, he did not hold these races half the time he was doing the preload. And uh, sometimes he didn't, sometimes he didn't. So I didn't pick up on the fact that uh, that's what he was doing. All right, I finally got this Bravo 3 input shaft preload about right, I believe. Um, so um, like I was saying in the previous video segment, I had gotten these two, these two bearings were too tight. They're too close together, which uh, increases the preload beyond 10 inches, 10 inch pounds. And uh, to get them apart, I had to go buy, uh, you can rent this, but I just went in and bought it. It's a bearing separator. And the bolts, the original bolts that came with it weren't long enough, so I had to go to the hardware store and buy eight inch long, five eighths bolts to, to make the width of this thing spread a little further. And um, so I was able to grab it in between here. And then when I pressed, the, actually this is upside down, I, I grabbed it right here, but I was actually pushing on the other side, pushing this gear that way. So I pushed it just a little bit to get the preload back off of it. Didn't take much. And uh, matter of fact, it took very little to get it to push back out. So I uh, got it loose again, and then I had to turn it over, press it back in again to get the, you, I pressed it to where I felt this washer just, it was it was moving around, and then when you can't feel this this spacer in here move at all, then you know you got it pressed just about right. So I uh, put it back on here, tighten up the, uh, oh, by the way, another tip, when you assemble this thing, don't assemble it in this tool. Go ahead and take the, the drive shaft out, put it all together in your hands in one place, and then uh, then drop it inside this tool, the, the uh, this U-joint will fit down inside this tool, and at least on mine it does. Uh, it's a lot easier to assemble it uh, uh, in, in your hands and use this silly tool. So um, at this time, I've got the preload set, I believe, and I'm going to have my assistant. The mistake I made in the, in the previous uh, segments was I, wasn't, I was spinning this nut, but I wasn't holding these races. And uh, at some point, uh, the, the, it got tight, and it wasn't but it was still loose, so I kept tightening up, not realizing that the entire assembly, can't tell here, this entire assembly was spinning on this nut right here, that, that joint right there, all this together was spinning together, as opposed to the uh, bearing spinning inside the bearings, excuse me, the uh, gear spinning inside the bearings. So the point I'm making is that you need to hold these races. It's not, there's videos on uh, YouTube showing uh, other people showing how to do this. And they did the same thing. They did sometimes they held these races, sometimes they didn't. So you've got to hold the races when you're testing preload. Don't let that get you. It got me. So go ahead and I'll have my assistant hold these races and I'll show you the preload on this bearing. And by the way, you don't have to buy a three hundred dollar inch uh dial type. This is a twenty dollar beam type inch pound torque wrench. So let's go ahead and see what we got. Hope you see that. There you go. It's above, it's above five and six. It was, let me hold it again. Try it again. It's hard to do this. There we go. It's just about, there we go. It's around five or six right in there. A little bit above six. Isn't it? It's hard to follow with the camera, but you can see that it's above the halfway point. It's closer to six or seven when I was doing it a while ago. All right. So um, I've got it above six at least uh it's sort of bounces around a little bit but it's at least above six the range is six to ten inch pounds 
So I'm going to go ahead and um, spin this around again some more. In the last video it. segment, I was showing the preload, and it was just a little bit loose. It was around five or six, which uh, it appeared to loosen up from when I actually uh, set it. So I'm going to show you again. So I've got it tightened up a little more, and now it's reading closer to 10 or 8 or 9, somewhere over in there. So you can see as I bring it around, it's definitely up around, it's definitely above 6, closer to 8, 9. But it doesn't go above 10, so it stays... I say it's less than 10, 8, 9, somewhere in that neighborhood. Let's go around again. Here we come. So you can see the preload's just below 10. So the range is 6 to 10. I would say this is good. We're going to put this thing together.